hear me. Uh, so this, is, this talk is about, um, so basically, so far, we've been looking at errors made by systems. And we've talked a little bit about errors made by humans, and here we will we'll see the link between the two. So how errors made by uh, systems affect errors made by humans. And so this work was uh, uh, done during the Johns Hopkins workshop in 2012. And the main idea was to measure uh, the performance of an ASR system uh, for a task. But then if you look up in the dictionary what a task is, you see that it's something which is performed by a human. Okay, so basically uh, uh, the principle is that uh, if you look at transcription itself, uh, generating a string of uh, words, a sequence of words or summarization or translations, they are not tasks, they are just technologies. Right? We have to look at what um, humans do and how well they perform using those technologies. Um, <clears throat> so this is the principle of ecological validity. And in this talk, uh, I will show um, how to measure uh, the performance of human subjects on a task and given different ASR systems outputs and then how to predict human performance uh, if you have a new ASR system, so you don't have to rerun the human task. Uh, maybe I don't need to go over uh, a lot of related work. You have plenty in this workshop. But basically, people, um, when they try to evaluate the quality of an ASR system, they look at the word sequence, and then they looked at uh, the uh, downstream tasks, and finally at how this impacts or how humans work. So the task we're looking at is the decision audit task. The scenario is that you are, you are a recently hired manager uh, catching up with past work. And so you, you uh, just arrived at the company. And then, unfortunately, at that company, they, they didn't have uh, meet, meeting minutes for the last meetings they had about the project you were working on. And so you have to use the, the recordings from those meetings in order to catch up. And uh, so the task is to find decisions, the decisions which were uh, made in these meetings. Uh, and you can use, for that, you can use a meeting browser, uh, which has the audio, the video of the meeting, and then also, of course, the ASR transcripts. Uh, there's a time constraint so that it's uh, not possible to just listen to the whole meeting and then just write down the decisions. Okay, it's actually, I think 25% uh, of the time of the recording. Uh, for that, we used the AMI corpus. And so the AMI corpus is a set of recordings, of uh, meetings recorded. And those meetings uh, were scenarized uh, uh, basically in uh, four consecutive meetings. And uh, in these meetings, people were designing a product and actually a remote control. And so the, the first three meetings, they do like the beginning of the design and then they have a uh, hypothesis. And in the last meeting, they actually decide on what will be in the final product. And they have to make their de decision based on budget constraints or, I don't know, uh, market studies and things like that. And so the idea is to uh, uh, listen to the recordings, uh, use the ASR transcript to l quickly locate the, the relevant information and then mark down uh, the, the decisions and uh, the support for the, those decisions. So why did people decide, I don't know, about the color or the shape of that remote control? Um, so for the experiment design, we tried to, uh, the main problem is to control for variability. And so we tried to uh, make a balanced design using five ASR conditions uh, with uh, five different meetings. So the, the meetings are centerized, so they're actually um, people designing different, um, uh, different products, but in comparable uh, conditions. And we had uh, 100 human subjects performing the task, uh, so on different combinations of uh, ASR condition and meetings. Uh, so the, the ASR systems were provided by uh, um, Johns Hopkins University 
And we had the reference transcript. We had two systems which had a word error rate at, at 20, about 20%. And the, the systems were designed uh, so that they have, um, uh, actually, if you, if you compute the word error rate from one system to the other one, they have a high word error rate. So it means that they have very different word uh, transcripts, but the same word error rate. And then 40% and 60% by uh, basically degrading the models. Uh, then we matched uh, three ASR systems with three meetings, uh, making trenche trenches, and then we run uh, sets of users on those trenches. And, and we used the Latin square um, design in order to uh, remove the effect of order. So if you, basically on the first meeting you process, uh, you might be very bad at the, the task, but then on the second one you get better and so on. Okay, so this removes, is supposed to remove the effect of order and also uh, the effect of like seeing a better ASR system in the beginning or seeing an easier meeting in the beginning. Uh, so we collected decision audit forms, I'm going to show you one. And then also uh, uh, usual screening questions that you would do in such an experiment. And click data, but we didn't use it yet. Um, then we performed an evaluation of subject performance, so how uh, humans perform at the task. And for that, we had uh, two judges uh, make reference decisions, uh, so what we call them rubrics. And so basically, what, the, what are the decisions that you were supposed to find? And then uh, uh, another set of uh, judges uh, score what the subject did, uh, wrote down in their uh, decision audit forms compared to these rubrics. And I'm not sure you can see very well, but this is the meeting browser. So uh, the human subject had like one screen with the meeting browser and another screen where they could fill in uh, the, the audit form. And so on this screen, they would see the video, be able to listen to the audio and see an extract of the transcripts, um, which cor corresponds to all the utterances, uh, which were uh, deemed to be uh, relevant for that, for, that, uh, for that meeting uh, in a summarization experiments uh, done before in that corpus. So it's called a manual summary, extractive summary. And what varies here is the, the text in, uh, which is available, and this comes from the different ASR systems. So then, then the, the, um, the man managers had to uh, fill those audit forms so they basically had to list the decisions about the product and then the, uh, it's, um, for each decision it's category and uh, uh, support for that decision and or like arguments for that decision and arguments uh, against that decision for uh, which were discussed, okay? And the problem is that you, it's, um, so to have uh, ecological validity, you need to uh, let people express themselves. So for instance, they have to write down by themselves the way they would in real life. And so you, you end up having uh, typos or people just filling in the wrong boxes and things like that, which is also a problem. Uh, then the judges uh, uh, made so th those rubrics and we had the other set of judges uh, fill in the score boxes and so here uh, you would get two points for finding the decision and then uh, one point for finding it partially, so like some piece of information is missing. And then uh, you would also get uh, additional credits for finding the, the correct uh, arguments for and against that decision. And so, uh, yeah, so this is the, the how the score of uh, a subject is computed for a given meeting. Uh, we performed a lot of uh, statistical tests in, in order to see if the, the data was valid. And uh, uh, basically after signific significant testing, it ended up that ASR did ha have an effect on the, on the scores, which is good. <laughs> if it doesn't have an effect, then you can start over. Um, <coughs> and, um, so I'm not showing the individual uh, scores for the systems, but uh, or maybe maybe here you can f you can see them. Um, so basically, in this graph here, you have the the um, scores for co uh, couples of one meeting, one ASR condition uh, versus water rates, and you see that the the um, 
the one problem is that the water rate is not very correlated with uh, human scores. And so if you want to predict those scores automatically, because uh, they are very expensive to, the, the experiments are very expensive to run, uh, then you cannot use word error rate itself. Okay, so then we tried uh, uh, to build a system to predict those scores automatically. Uh, the first thing we tried was to simulate the evaluation. So here the objective is, uh, if you have a new ASR system, uh, given a decision dialog act, okay, so th there's something I forgot to say, is that uh, uh, when we created the rubrics for the, the reference decisions, the judges also linked every decision to uh, utterances in the, in the transcripts. And so therefore, uh, we have an annotation uh, for, okay, each decision, let's say uh, the, the color is banana, or something like that, and then we know that uh, this was uh, decided in this uh, utterance here, and that those two utterances were support for that decision. And so the idea here for the simulating the evaluation is given a dialogue act, uh, uh, which contains or which relates to a decision, would the auditor find that decision? Okay, it's a binary classification problem, and we train a classifier on a set of features. Uh, uh, in order to predict whether the subject find it, found it or not. Uh, we train the system on uh, N minus one ASR systems and then we test it on the, on the left out ASR system. So for features, we had several categories of features. The first one was uh, features to model the difficulty of the task. So basically, if a meeting is more difficult than the, the others, if a user is better at finding decisions than the others, uh, and if the, the, uh, if the dialogue act was presented in the extractive summary, so in the user interface or not, which might uh, strongly affect how the user uh, perform. Then we have another set of features uh, in order to model the corruption of the transcripts compared to the reference transcripts. So we uh, put in that a lot of uh, word error rate variance based on content words, top words, and so on, uh, and topic words. And we also looked at uh, uh, how the syntactic analysis of the sentence changes with uh, corruption of the transcripts uh, and using uh, different variants of measuring the, the distance between the two parse trees. Uh, finally, we had uh, language modeling features, which are, uh, for instance, um, have, um, did we see uh, that word engram in a reference corpus, or what is the probability, language model probability of that sentence in the corpus? The last set of features was uh, features in order to model the relevance of the dialogue act. Okay, is that dialogue act really important for finding that decision or not? And uh, we tried to come up with decision detection features, so uh, things which linguistically we thought were uh, going to uh, be good predictors of whether there's a decision or not in that uh, dialogue act. And also we used summarizers, which uh, are systems which model relevance by themselves. Okay? They have a module which uh, objective is to model relevance. And, but those summarizers were not uh, designed for decision detection. They are just ge generic uh, summarizers. Then we put all that, those features in a, in, a, uh, so in, a, in a classifier. And uh, uh, here I'm showing the results in terms of uh, recall and precision. So it's uh, leave one out. And you, you can see the average and the, the boxes around are the, the uh, standard deviation. Uh, and here I'm only comparing uh, uh, the whole set of features versus if you had only had uh, word error rates for that particular uh, dialogue act. And you, you see that word error rate is actually really bad uh, compared to <coughs> using all the features. Uh, so we also looked at subsets of features and by just removing one subset at a time and see what have affects more the, the classifier. And here you see that uh, uh, if you remove the task-related features, so features which indicate, indicate the, the identifier of the user or identifier of the meeting and so on, uh, then you have a huge drop in performance. And um, 
the second most uh, big drop is actually if you remove uh, summarizers, so which model the relevance of the, of the features. Of course, if you only have weather rate, you do poorly. Uh, next, and so the simulating the evaluation is great, but then it only holds on the data on which you run the evaluation. And what you want to do is to be able to uh, uh, simulate th that evaluation, but on new data that you've never seen, right? And so here, uh, the, um, the problem is uh, basically how will uh, um, uh, word transcript errors affect a system which tries to do the same task as humans, which is decision prediction. Okay, so now for a new ASR system and a new meeting that you've never seen, uh, given, uh, given a dialogue act, uh, so is there uh, a decision related to that dialogue act or not? Okay, and uh, same thing, we, tra we use the same set of features, we train, train a classifier, and uh, um, we try to predict whether it's a decision or not. <clears throat> and so here, uh, it's a, so it's a, a double it's a uh, leave one out on pairs of meeting ASR, so it's a lot of experiments, so I'm only showing uh, one result. But here you see, for instance, uh, the, the performance for each ASR system, and it's uh, basically a bit lower than it was uh, on the other experiments. Uh, one interesting thing is that the system is very poor at predicting the, the decisions, at finding decisions uh, in the reference transcripts. <laughs> And it's actually because it's trained uh, on uh, ASR systems. So it expects errors. And suddenly, a lot of features, uh, basically all the word error rate related features, uh, all go down to zero. So they're not useful anymore. And so it's a, it's a problem of mismatch between the training and the, and the test data. Uh, here we can also look at the most relevant features. And we, we see a similar. Um, uh, so it's a similar trend, except that the effect of the user uh, is not in here, and so there is uh, much less effect on the task features. Uh, again, where the rate is not very good. And so to conclude, uh, so what we tried in this work was to measure the effect of ASR on humans' work, and in particular on the, the task of decision audits. Uh, we run uh, multiple ASR systems and, uh, on uh, multiple meetings, and then we had uh, uh, human subjects uh, find decisions in these meetings. And we saw that the uh, transcript quality was not the only factor uh, predicting human success. Okay? Some uh, meetings are more difficult than others, and this is a, a big, and some users are better than others, and this is a big source of variability. Uh, so the take home me message is that. Um, uh, ecological validity uh, is uh, something very important, I think, for us, because it's kind of the end result, right? Uh, um, uh, and of course, that intrinsic metrics are not uh, very good predictors uh, for those kind of uh, performance. And so we, we propose to lower the cost of human experiments by just using simulation. Okay, so there are some uh, uh, open problems I want to talk to you, to you about. Uh, the first is uh, about subject evaluation. The questions we can ask is how much uh, data is needed? Uh, how can we have better control of uh, uh, variance? Right? We had a lot of variance from uh, the meetings difficulty and user uh, capability. And how can we do cheaper collection? And about the automatic evaluation, uh, uh, there are still many problems to be tackled, like what is the right classification problem? Uh, how can we port it to other tasks? And uh, uh, can we make basically a task independent metric? And something I didn't write down here, but the problem here is that it's a black box evaluation, right? And so how can we open that black box and learn things so that we can improve the systems so that in the end, uh, uh, human subjects do better at the tasks they're doing? Okay, thank you.
Yeah. And so the task is related to some specific parts of uh, the corpora related to the decisions to be made as a manager. So I was wondering if you checked that the water rate of the system <coughs> the whole corpora is actually related with the water rate you would measure on this particularly interesting uh, task related to the, to the task itself. So uh, actually, the water rate was uh, computed on the set of meetings we used for the evaluation. But then, uh, of course, the water rate was not the same on the particular decision uh, dialogue acts. Um, so I don't have the numbers, but I know that uh, there, there, there has been some studies uh, in the summarization community that uh, important sentences tend to have a lower water rate and especially sentences that are selected by uh, summarization systems. So uh, I believe that the, the word error rate has been a bit uh, lower than actually what was estimated. So we were not able to measure the time they used for reading. Um, maybe. Yeah, it's, it's actually very hard because you have to do eye tracking. Well. And uh, so some, some of the time they used to uh, uh, write down the decisions. And so this we measured. Some of the time they used to just think. Okay, well, uh, what should I do? Uh, next and so on. And some of the time they, they used to, uh, to listen or to uh, read. Uh, and uh, we don't have, we, we're not able to split that time. But you do have the amount of time they were actually playing the audio. Yeah, yeah, we measured that. Yes. And so did that, I mean, you would expect that to correlate with the um, word error rate. And if it's more error calling, you expect them to listen more. So I don't know the, the specific value, but what, what I know is that in, <coughs> yes, in this figure, you see something uh, very strange. It's that uh, uh, one system has a very high weather rate, but then the users did uh, very well uh, for that uh, system. And so it's the points on the top right. And this is actually because there are two different behaviors. One of them was to rely on the transcripts in order to find decisions, and the other one was when the transcript was too correct, too corrupted, they had to uh, rely on the audio much more. And so they would listen and probably get more cues than just reading the transcripts. Yeah. That's, um... And I think like for, the, for decision making processes, uh, you probably need to listen to the audio to be sure that this is the decision. Uh, like the, the speaker saying, okay, let's decide that is the leader of the conversation, you can hear that. And so it's much easier uh, than just to read it. Are you saying that even if the word error rate was zero, you would still get better scores by actually listening to the audio? Yeah. I don't think yeah, that's that's actually, actually, that's what we see here. So what, what we found in these really earlier studies were that once people had confidence in the transcript, they tended to rely on it, even when it was sometimes wrong, yeah. and they wouldn't listen as much. But if it was really bad, then they start listening, which just took them more time for the task. And they probably uh, covered less decision. This is something we, we could uh, measure. They probably covered less decision, yeah. but then had a much better score on those decisions. Yeah. Yeah. No more questions? <coughs> 